So here are screenshots from the WDS webpage where we can see the procedure to get a member of the World Data System. And there we have the word evaluation. And when we also look at the um, form for the PNL report, there we have a, the expression recurrent evaluation of the WDS members. So, and with that, we, we uh, ask ourselves um, what kind of a regular evaluation might be for a member of WDS or in general uh, could be useful. And some question that we I'm asking or we are asking from the workplace monitoring service is how to do such an evaluation, what are the benefits of such an evaluation, what are the competencies or responsibilities, how shall it then be reported, and what I would like to give you the following is experience from our side. And also to raise the question, if it's a proven example for uh, the world data system, so I don't say it's a proven example, and I don't want to say that, I sorry, to make clear, it's a question mark, it's just an open question. So to make it clear, we are uh, talking about glaciers, and for that here, a short uh, slide that shows glacier change in the Alps, to the left, the Great Aletsch Glacier, the largest glacier in the Alps, and to the right another glacier, also quite big, and we see the prominent uh, glacier loss, and that's very important because everyone can see that, and uh, that's also one of the uh, key issues that glaciers are recognized as key indicators of climate change. So, and to monitor that, we have the Global Terrestrial Network for Glaciers. Now, I don't go into detail on that because uh, I have another talk tomorrow where I go in that, but I'm, and here I just have to make uh, give some explanation of the bodies that I will treat in the following. So important to say that the GTNG exists of three operational bodies, which are the Global Land Ice Measurement from Space Initiative, working with uh, satellite imagery to get glacier outlines. Then we have the World Glacier Monitoring Service and the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado. And all three of them are in charge of the Global Testing Network for glaciers. We have the steering committee and it to have a closer look, it exists of an advisory board where we have data users and uh, from different fields, from the remote sensing side, but also from in situ measurements, and also then from the from the international uh, bodies, and then the executive board, which consists then of the members of the, op the operational team of these bodies. In case of the World Glacier Monitoring Service, we have a small team at the University of Zurich where we also have some dedicated funding for these activities. So to, uh, just to give a short overview of the data sets where, uh, that are in the uh, World Glacier Monitoring Service, we have annual calls for data where we actively compile the glacier data through our national correspondence and the principal investigators. And then there is a one year retention period. So to, to uh, say, uh, ensure that also the investigators can use the data first and also for practical reasons because sometimes there is also some like, adjustments needed to revise the data. Then we have uh, data on glacial length changes, aerial changes, thickness and mass changes and then some additional glacial uh, events like special events like uh, outbursts, floods and so on and all these are stored in the fluctuations of glaciers database. And to give an overview of what that uh, means, here we have uh, an image for field work in, in the Alps and also in Patagonia, to, uh, where we see where we are drilling stakes into the ice to measure the ablation. Also in the uh, higher parts of the glaciers, we have to dig uh, uh, holes to measure the density of the snow. That's the in situ glycological method, and then we have the geodetic method using satellite imagery to assess volume changes of the glaciers. Of course, we can also do then assess the glacial length changes, and all these data are also described on a poster which is in front of us, and I can give you more information on that later on if you wish. So the backbone is the Worldwide Scientific Collaboration Network, consisting of the uh, corresp national correspondents and, of course, all the principal investigators. So the World Glacier Monitoring Service is not the office in Zurich, but it's actually all uh, data producers. Uh, working in all parts of the world that form the World Glacier Monitoring Service. And we have now an evaluation of the World Glacier Monitoring Service and the Global Testing Network for Glaciers. 
through the uh, GTNG advisory board. And they state that every eight years they have a way to work. And this consists then of uh, several uh, parts, several reports that I will show you now in detail. First, we have a self-evaluation report by the operational bodies. So the three uh, executives, the, the three uh, like WGMS, NSIDC, and GLIMS. We have then, uh, it's not important to read here the details, but just to say we have three uh, for every organization, one chapter, and then an overall chapter summarizing uh, the uh, whole GTNG. So because it's important to have that as a whole. As some examples from the WGMS, uh, we also made an, uh, um, a questionnaire to all our data users and principal investigators. That's an example for one of these questions. How do you evaluate our data and service products in general, for instance? Another was, for instance, how to uh, uh, evaluate the access to the data and so on. And what we can here see, so the color, that's also say that's a light green, so that's not a poor. Yeah, so that is okay, so to make that clear. So here we are a light green and then a bit darker green, which is very good. So, uh, but we also see, yeah, that's uh, quite positive to say, but also it's not, a, well, it's good, but not too good. So there is still some potential for improvement. And that uh, we also then state in the evaluation report, so there are clear uh, positive um, things to say, like the active compilation of the glacier data. Also important, we have digital and printed products, which is important to give also visibility to our data producers if they have uh, the glacier as a photograph in the bulletin of the WGMS, that's also important for them. Then key challenges are, as I mentioned, this uh, uh, geodetic methods, for instance, we have very few, only few hundred in, uh, in situ observations, and in light of, in view of the 200,000 collections we have worldwide, we have to see how are they representative and so on. And of course, we, it's evident that the geodetic method, when we can assess volume changes for a whole mountain range, has a great potential that we have to use uh, stronger in the future. Essentially, hereby is of course to have uh, secured uh, ex uh, funding, which we have, but we also have to use the existing resources more efficiently to make the uh, best of it, and also to find additional money. For instance, we also recently started to do capacity building uh, measurements, um, like for instance, organization of uh, summer schools to train uh, people in the field, but that is then through external funding, so we have to look for additional funding for that. So other important things, uh, I've already mentioned the active compilation of glacier changes, then also to go through literature to uh, enrich the, the data we have and also to uh, improve the data quality we have. And then also very important, the easy access to the glacier data, like to improve our metadata browser, but also recently we started the glacier app for mobile devices where everyone then can very easily access this glacier data. Finally, also the reporting, we were thinking of a merging of our two data products in our, in one new product uh, to save here uh, some uh, resources. Then second, we had um, the, uh, a site visit in, in Boulder, where the advisory board and executive board uh, come together to discuss the issue. And following that, we have then the evaluation report by the advisory board. This also has the same structure for every three operational bodies. And there, what was interesting is that uh, they also, there was a clear vision uh, stated that the GTNG as a whole, because that indeed uh, has so far been, has been a thinking of the three operational bodies by itself and not uh, as, a, as a whole. And also what they, uh, uh, several uh, technical points like to improve the user friendliness, uh, for instance, or the creation of a GTNG metadata browser where all the data can be assessed to one one-stop portal, as, as mentioned here. There was also a feedback on the self-evaluation report that uh, I don't want to go in detail, but uh, finish with the last slide uh, to see what is important. There was already uh, evaluation eight years ago, but what is now new that we have here evaluation for <coughs> the whole construction, the GTG, the Global Terrestrial Network, 
four glaciers. And this is also to be mentioned finally that it has a long tradition, over 100 years, of this international coordinated glacier monitoring. And uh, it results in a report to IACS, but the open question is now how shall this report it to the world data system? So we are not quite uh, clear to us how, for instance, how we have to report that, if that is needed, or what is we can discuss now, or maybe discuss later, or in the general discussion. So I will in the recession. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. I've done a lot of those reviews. There are a lot of work. This is very work heavy. And I just finished this week writing an evaluation of a data center at the University of Santa Barbara. And one has to be very careful of the words one puts in the evaluation because it gets read by the people who give the money, of course. And uh, uh, it is very easy to use a word that means something in one country means something else in a different country and have a very unfortunate outcome. So how do you correct that? Well, to say it's still ongoing, all these uh, reports are finished, but the final we have now uh, received the uh, uh, evaluation report and we wrote, was the can add an uh, answer, a uh, letter on the evaluation report, and now it's uh, missing still the report as a whole, as it will be submitted to IAX, or they will receive it in these days, and of course we don't know yet the feedback, but we cannot change it. We could uh, deliver a list of uh, errors, like uh, technical errors, you know, but if, if there is a word there in, then it's in. Yeah? But of course we have the site visit at the NSIDC where problems could have been discussed before. So the idea is also because, of course, the idea is clearly that the advisory board is, uh, is together with the executive board. It takes in one line and uh, we have to strengthen the whole com community. Yeah. And that would be a thing that we discuss at the site visit, for instance. But it's, of course, a critical point. Yeah.